This woman was sentenced to 51 years to life in prison, but for good reason. She wanted to make some easy money, so she came up with a plan, but that plan would come at the cost of her first and second husband. Then, as she was about to get caught, she tried framing her own daughter for everything she had done, but that totally backfired on her, and after nearly a decade, she was finally brought to justice. This is the story of Stacy Castor. On the 22nd of August 2005, in Syracuse, New York, at around 2 p.m., a 38-year-old woman named Stacy Castor dialed 911 and told the dispatcher, I need the police at my home right now. The reason Stacy called the police was because her husband, David Castor, locked himself in their bedroom all morning and all of yesterday, and Stacy hadn't seen him ever since. David also had work that morning, which he ended up missing, and Stacy rang his phone numerous times, but he didn't answer any of her calls. The dispatcher asked Stacy if she knew why her husband was acting the way he was, and Stacy kind of had an idea why. You see, just a few days before, Stacy and David had gotten into an argument and David told Stacy that if she ever decided to leave him, she would regret it. Whatever that meant, the dispatcher sent an officer to Stacy's address and she was outside waiting for him when he arrived. Stacy allowed the officer to enter her house and the officer went to her bedroom and started knocking on the door. He told David to open the door and this was the police, but just like Stacy, he got no response. The officer then went outside and tried looking through the bedroom window to see if David was okay, but he couldn't get a clear view, so he went back to the bedroom, but instead of knocking on the door like last time, he just kicked the door right open. Once the officer went inside, it became pretty clear to him that something was wrong with David. David was lying on his bed completely naked and he was covered in vomit. The officer then checked his pulse, but there was nothing. The officer then searched around the bedroom to see if he could find anything, and he did. He found a bottle of brandy, a bottle of antifreeze, and a couple of glasses, one of them with this strange green liquid inside. The officer then left the bedroom and told Stacy, you need to come inside right now. Stacy did exactly that. She went to her bedroom and the moment she saw David, she started screaming. The officer then called for backup and within no time, the house was surrounded by crime scene experts, investigators, EMTs, etc. The medics didn't even bother taking David to the hospital because it was pretty clear that he was dead. Stacy was obviously the first person to be questioned and she told the police that David had been heavily drinking and for the last month or so he had been acting very strange. She also gave some other details claiming that David had high blood pressure and that he said himself that he knew he was going to die soon. Despite these strange details and David's strange death, there wasn't enough evidence that proved there was any foul play and David's death was subsequently ruled a suicide. That obviously didn't happen. Stacy murdered David by poisoning him with antifreeze. That's what that strange green liquid in the glass was and Stacy had gotten away with it. Now you might be thinking, why would Stacy want to murder her husband? It was for money, simple as that. You see, David had taken out a life insurance policy under his name and Stacy was the beneficiary. Once David died, Stacy would earn his estate and the insurance money and in total that was around $300,000, give or take. Stacy had also forged David's will by excluding his son from his previous marriage so the money was all for herself. David wasn't the first person that Stacy had murdered. She had murdered her previous husband as well. In 1985, when Stacy was in high school, she met a boy named Michael Wallace and the two of them quickly started dating each other. By 1988, they had gotten married and they would go on to have two daughters together, Ashley and Bree. On the outside, it seemed their marriage was as good as it could be, but that actually wasn't the case. You see, Michael and Stacy didn't make a lot of money. They had full-time jobs, but they were barely getting by. On top of that, they had both allegedly cheated on each other at some point in their marriage, and Michael was allegedly a heavy drinker. 
Michael also had children from a previous marriage, so he kind of brought that baggage with him, and after more than a decade of being married to him, Stacy had enough. Instead of getting divorced, she came up with a plan. In late 1999, Michael became very sick. He went to a doctor and started complaining that he was always feeling dizzy. It felt like he was always drunk, even though he wasn't drinking. It got so bad that one time, after he finished using the toilet, he stood up, but he was barely able to do so. Michael barely had any energy to do anything. Even just moving around a little, he became so tired that he immediately had to lie down. Michael was constantly coughing, he looked terrible, he'd even gotten his blood pressure checked and everything, but he didn't know what the problem was. The doctor tried helping Michael, but even they didn't know what the problem was. Then, in January 2000, Michael's 12-year-old daughter Ashley walked into the living room in their house and noticed her father was lying down on the couch. There was a TV in front of him, but the TV wasn't switched on. Ashley then took a closer look at her father, and she noticed he had this weird expression expression on his face. Ashley didn't know what was wrong with him and since she had to go to school to pick up her sister, Bree, she didn't ask him any questions and she left. Then, when she returned home, paramedics were already there. What Ashley didn't know at the time was that weird expression on her father's face was him dying in front of her. Doctors told Stacy that Michael passed away from a heart attack, and that's what Stacy told Ashley and everyone else around her. Michael's sister was very suspicious of her brother's death. His skin was dark purple from his head to his chest when the paramedics took him away. It didn't look anything like a heart attack, and because of that, she asked for an autopsy to be carried out, but Stacy decided against that. And since it was the doctors that said Michael had passed away from a heart attack, that's what everyone believed, and foul play was never really considered. But that obviously is what happened. Stacy murdered Michael the same way she murdered David, by using antifreeze, and that's the reason why Michael always felt like he was drunk. Antifreeze contains a compound called ethylene glycol, and when you consume too much of that, you will become drunk or feel like you're drunk. After Michael passed away, Stacy was rewarded $55,000 from his life insurance policy. She used that money to pay off her debts and even go to Disney World with her two daughters. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Stacy then met David in 2001 and by 2003, they had gotten married. They didn't have any children together, they just had Stacy's children from her previous marriage. All Stacy and her children could do now was look forward and adapt to their new lives with David. It wasn't easy, but they had to do what they had to do. Then, Stacy murdered David and his death was ruled a suicide, but there was one person who knew his death couldn't have been a suicide, it had to be something else. That person was David's ex-wife. Janice. Janice and David had met each other when they were teenagers in school. They started dating each other and that eventually led them to getting married in 1976. Two years later, they had a son together who was also named David and this was the son that David Sr. had apparently left out of his will when he died. Janice eventually found out about David Sr.'s strange death and when she heard he excluded his son from his will, she wasn't buying it. Even though they had gotten divorced in 2001 and they left on bad terms because their marriage became very toxic, Janice still acknowledged that David Sr. was a good father for the most part and he was close with his son, so it didn't make any sense as to why he would want to exclude him from his will and leave everything to Stacy. Janice also discovered that Stacy claimed that David Sr. was a heavy drinker and that attributed to his suicide, but Janice did not buy any of that. When she was married to David Sr., the only time he really ever drank was on special occasions, so she knew that something was not right. She was also aware that Stacy's first husband, Michael, had passed away under very strange circumstances, just like David, and when she put two and two together, she decided to report this information to the authorities. Janice worked with the authorities by providing them with any information she could, and she became a key person in helping them solve this investigation. With the authorities already investigating David Sr.'s death and the information that Janice provided them with, 
A warrant was successfully obtained to exhume or dig up Michael's body to find out how he really died. Because, if you recall, the doctor said that Michael passed away from a heart attack, but an autopsy was never carried out because Stacy turned that down. In September 2007, Michael's body was exhumed and an autopsy was later carried out. Once the autopsy was finished, the results confirmed what many people believed. Michael did not die from a heart attack, he died the same way David died, from antifreeze poisoning. Now at this point, the police were pretty confident that Stacy had murdered her two husbands, but they needed concrete evidence in order to convict her. So what they did was they went to her house and told her how Michael really died and they asked her some questions regarding that. Then she was taken to police headquarters for further questioning and when the interview was finished, she was taken back home. Stacy was now really worried at this point. She knew the police were catching up on her and it was only a matter of time until her entire scheme was exposed. So she came up with a plan. It was still September 2007 and college had started for 19 year old Ashley. She was signing an attendance sheet when suddenly a woman that worked at the college approached her and told her you need to follow me. Ashley followed the woman and she was brought to these police officers who were waiting for her. Ashley was very confused. She had no idea why the police wanted to see her, but they quickly explained to her why they were there. The officers told Ashley that her father's body was exhumed and he passed away from antifreeze poisoning, not from a heart attack. Ashley was shocked after hearing this and she couldn't believe it. When the officers were done talking to her, she immediately rang her mother and told her everything that just happened. Stacy could tell her daughter was very upset, so she offered to pick her up early, but Ashley refused and said she'll finish whatever classes she had for the rest of the day. After Ashley finished her classes, her mother picked her up and they started driving home. But on their way home, Stacy told Ashley they should have a drink together because of how difficult this day has been for them. Ashley was very surprised when she heard this. Her mother never allowed her to drink. The legal drinking age in New York is 21 and Stacy was allowing Ashley to drink with her. So she was very excited and said she'd love to. When they got back home, Stacy poured a drink in a glass for Ashley and Ashley started drinking it. And when she was finished, she started drinking straight from the bottle. After some time, Ashley started feeling really sick. Stacy told her this was completely normal and to make her feel better she gave her a pill to swallow and she told her to go to bed because after a good night's rest she'd be perfectly fine. Ashley did exactly that, she swallowed the pill and went to bed. Ashley woke up the next morning and she was still feeling a little sick but she felt a lot better than yesterday. After getting ready she went to college and after finishing the one class she had that morning she came back home. When she arrived home Stacy offered her a drink once again and even though Ashley was a little hesitant because of what happened yesterday she still drank it. Stacy then offered her another drink and Ashley drank that as well. She then started feeling really sick like yesterday so she went to her bedroom and lay down on her bed. The next morning, Brie discovered Ashley on her bed, completely unresponsive. Brie then started screaming, Ashley, Ashley, but Ashley didn't respond. She also had this weird expression on her face, similar to Michael when he was lying down on the living room couch. After hearing Brie screaming, Stacy stormed into Ashley's bedroom and once she saw her, she called 911. The paramedics soon arrived and Ashley was rushed to the hospital. When Ashley was in the hospital, she was still unresponsive, but after several hours, she started slowly recovering and she was finally able to string a sentence together and perceive her surroundings. At first, Ashley had no idea why she was in a hospital. Then, an officer appeared in front of her and told her there was a note found on her bed that said she murdered David, Michael, and killed herself. Ashley was confused out of her mind when the officer told her that. She had no idea what he was talking about and she was like, no, 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 no. I didn't do any of that. What happened was, Stacy had written a suicide note and tried framing Ashley for the murders of her two husbands and what was supposed to be Ashley's suicide, except 
Ashley survived. Since Ashley survived, she told the officer the only thing she could remember. Her mother gave her some drinks and then she became very sick. Bree and Stacy were waiting outside the emergency room and Stacy was begging to go inside because she was apparently so concerned for Ashley's well-being. But since the police now had enough evidence, they arrested Stacy at the hospital for Ashley's attempted murder. Stacy was later taken to trial and in February 2009, she was sentenced to 51 years to life in prison for murder, attempted murder and forgery. She wouldn't serve much off that sentence, however, because in June 2016, when she was only 48 years old, she passed away from a heart attack in her cell. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment down below what you want to see next, and subscribe. Until then, see you next time.